Willkommen, Professor Otto. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. I mean, this is nice because it, it tells us once more the world is small and it's probably always getting smaller um, as we go, right? And um, thank you for the nice introduction. And um, that's, uh, yeah, that's a funny, funny coincidence. Yes, and also um, thanks for having me. And it's it's for me a great pleasure to uh, to give, um, well, a, a keynote speech in, in this prestigious event because this is the event uh, that focuses on, let's say, getting things done, I should say, and that's that's what we need right now. Um, I prepared a couple of thoughts that I would like to share with you um, for the next, like, I don't know, five to 10 minutes or so. And uh, I think as we went over the last three, four years already, uh, I think that's always important to, yeah, every other day, sit back a little bit and, and, and think what, what let's say, our agenda really is and what the purpose of that is, what we are doing. So that brings me to, to the rationale for Gaia-X, right? Because in the end, Gaia-X is a, is a cornerstone of, let's say, the fair data economy and the single European market. And as you know, that the fair data economy is mainly, let's say, written down in the, in the EU data strategy. Um, which basically um, tries to find the right balance between uh, reusing data as much as we can for, let's say, the benefits of individuals, of companies, but the European societies. But on the other hand, of course, protect uh, the legitimate interest of the data providers and also protect the trust that data receivers have in, in the data source. And um, uh, one fundamental concept in this, let's say, uh, endeavor to find this balance is what we call sovereignty. And I know this is, let's say, there are a lot of, let's say, debates whether this uh, this notion is correct or <clears throat> conveys probably also, uh, a, well, a difficult message. Um, for me, sovereignty does not mean just to cut all the relationships to others. And in saying that, I would like to, to touch upon of, um, what Olaf Scholz, the German chancellor, said in the opening speech of the Hannover Trade Fair, because he said, well, our understanding of sovereignty does explicitly not mean to reduce the number of relationships that we maintain, but the contrast is true, right? Sovereignty means that we have more relationships because we want to end up with more choices in the end. And I, I think that that pointed quite nicely. And that is also what sovereignty, in my point of view, um, means when we talk about cloud-based data spaces. So if we then go a little bit deeper into what, what are the ingredients for this cook recipe uh, to make um, sovereignty, data sovereignty in the cloud happen, then of course, um, um, one of the, 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 the fundamental points is of course trust. Um, because in ecosystems, we do not have any more closed communities where everybody knows each other for like, for decades, right? But uh, trust needs to be achieved between, let's say, participants that come and go, right? That is, let's say, in a dynamic fashion. So that's one of the, well, the core um, objectives um, of Gaia-X in my personal point of view. And I know that Francesco um, will agree with, with me very heavily, um, has, to, has to tackle. I also mentioned that, let's say, the freedom of choice. We don't want to end up, let's say, locked in, in, let's say, the offerings of a limited number of, of providers, wherever they come from. Let's also stress this. Um, but we want to have the choice to, let's say, the freedom to choose which kind of, let's say, infrastructure and data services are used in order to uh, be part of this fair data economy. And one prerequisite to make that happen, of course, is interoperability. So we need to make sure that, let's say, interoperability can be achieved between services. Um, and I know, Pierre, I'm not sure whether you're on site, but we discussed a little bit whether interoperability also exists between data or only between apps or services. Um, but I think, let's say, that what we need to achieve is that's, that um, data can flow between um, individual data spaces and within these data spaces in a, in a slightly easy fashion and uh, with low entry barriers and low um, barriers of technology depth, let's call it like that. And we need to be able to, to behave, behave self-determined when it comes to what happens with our data, right? Um, and to... Well, to, to, to make um, this kind of cook recipe happen and to bring it to life, well, a federated data and service infrastructure is the answer. And that brings me to the second point that I'd like to stress once more. That's what, what Gaia-X is all about, right? If we look into the scope of Gaia-X, we can 
probably distinguish between, let's say, a functional view, which is which we started off with. Remember this X-like um, uh, um, shape that we had. Um, and of course, one of the key um, functional objectives is to, to, to be able to share data within data spaces, but also uh, between different data spaces, which we call um, federations. So, and that is also why it's very wise to have, let's say, this three-partite scope um, covering data exchange, but also making federations happen, and also compliance services that make sure that um, you know, trust is good, but control is better. That's also the saying, and that holds also true for data ecosystems. However, when we talk about the scope of Gaia X, we can also look into a life cycle um, in, from, at it from a life cycle perspective. And what we, of course, need to do, we need to come up with specs. So we need to describe how it should work. And um, I think it was also a very, very powerful decision to come up with, let's say, with new versions of our, let's say, designs and specs every quarter so that we always have, let's say, progress. Um, on the other hand, we also need to make sure that, let's say, the specs are being implemented, in particular through open source software developments. And that is where we made big progress, I must say. And that is also why this, this conference and, and you guys are so important because you make it happen in the end. And then we need to bring the software into operations. This happens to a certain extent through the labels because they basically give trust in operations, but also, I think it was a good decision to, let's say, um, um, think ahead when, when we talk about, let's say, the digital clearinghouse, because somebody needs to run these services in the end for the users of Gaia. So what are the strengths that basically Gaia X brings to the table of the European um, uh, data economy? I think uh, the first thing to mention is the community that's, again, also here. And this is, let's say, still the greatest thing and also one of the greatest things I have and, and have had the chance to experience in, in these kind of, let's say, data management business process uh, rearms. From the very first day, there was lots of enthusiasm around it, and it, it's basically still a movement. And that is something which is great. It was not dictated by a state, by a government, or by, let's say, enforced by one company. It is a movement of, of like-minded enthusiasts, and that's a great thing. The other thing is focus, I think, is also a strength. Um, while in the first days of Gaia, of course, we wanted to basically do everything at once. And I think also to, let's say, uh, the work that Pierre has done and the entire CTO team and the architecture working groups, we basically reduced it to the max. And I think that's a wise decision. Also, we have commitment from all stakeholder groups, right? I mean, we touch upon topics that are related to businesses, as I mentioned, but also to the citizens in Europe and also the governments, and we have all of them aboard. I should also say that we have a, a very strong management team and a head office team aboard. And I want to explicitly mention that here because you did a hell of the job over the last years to drive things forward and to bring this, this you know, beehive or uh, what is it, ant stack you know, into one direction. And that's, of course, uh, a, a, a true challenge. And um, Gaia X is not alone. We have a network of partners, um, for example, in the Data Spaces Business Alliance but also in the data spaces support center. And that is something that we should leverage, I would say. So how could the way ahead look like? Um, so if I try to look a little bit ahead, I think the future landscape of cloud-based um, uh, data spaces will probably be, let's say, characterized by large data platform providers, of which also a couple, if not many, come from outside, the, outside Europe. Um, but they will adopt to our um, Gaia X specifications and standards, and that's a good thing. But a way greater number will be smaller edge service, edge cloud integration service providers. And that is something where uh, Europe is strong, in my belief, because that is close to the process. And it was mentioned at the beginning, close to industrial manufacturing process. And that's that's really an opportunity that we all together should seize. So, well. Um, what could be recommendations for the way ahead? Well, first, I think if the Lighthouse projects win, also Gaia X will win. So we should support um, with the strengths that we have the Lighthouse projects because, well, basically that's where the proof of the pudding is, as somebody said in the past. Also, we should not, of course, we should focus on Europe, but I, I think we have, let's say, the chance to do something which is 
innovative around the globe and we should be looking into let's say exporting our ideas um, also to other places of the world also we should we should stress open source communities because they allow us to well to bring um, the power of the many the power of the community together plus also coming up with a with a trust anchor in itself we also will probably look into, let's say, moving from de facto standards um, eventually to, to more formal standards because they give more trust, more security, in particular also for smaller and medium-sized companies to embark on this journey. I think that's important. And I think we should just make sure that, well, the Gaia-X technology and solutions are shipped in, as I said, um, cloud services and cloud-based uh, data spaces. So, to conclude, I think the time is really now to seize the opportunity of this one in a decade chance that we have here with Gaia-X. And well, it's your community, it's the tech community that makes that happen. And that's why it's so important to, to have you all here. And once more, it's uh, very unfortunate that I can't join you today. I would have loved to, but I wish you all the best for today and tomorrow. And um, well, Gaia X uh, trusts in you, right? Thank you very much.